Filipino here and we'd like it to keep it that way, you know, like, ah, I can't do that, you know, yeah, so. Now, it'll probably happen anyway. I mean, what do you do when you've got people, right? When you've got people who say to you, well, will you tell me if something's a good neighborhood or not? How do you answer that? You know what? I'm going to suggest that you drive around and become familiar with the communities here. You will know the neighborhood that feels right for you. So I'm going to tell you about some neighborhoods and I'm going to give you some homework to drive around and become familiar so that you can choose the neighborhood that's right for you. That makes sense? Right? Because boy do people ask you that. Well, you should let me know if it's a nice neighborhood or not. No. <laughs> well, not. <laughs> All right, next one, seller's representations. So here now the seller is representing <coughs> that the financing, there's no financing or defaults. It's not a distressed property. What is a distressed property? There's liens on it. That is not a distressed property. <coughs> Anybody? No? That there's uh, problems with maybe termites or... Nope. nope. Or nope. It's not happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got it. A distressed property is one where somebody's not making payments on a on some sort of a debt. So if somebody is behind in their homeowners association dues or in their a, the apartment owners association dues and they haven't paid them because they're really annoyed with that association, they shouldn't have done that and I'm not paying that bill, you go, yes you are. You are now paying that bill. <laughs> We are not allowing the homeowners association to foreclose on. What do you mean foreclose? They're allowed to foreclose on you. You do not want to go there and you do not want to go there now. You don't want this problem. Pay those dues and let's move on. Ah, you're making me do it. Right? Move on. If they are not paying their taxes, can someone buy a pop property on a tax lien? Yes, you can buy tax liens and take over the whole property. You do not want to be delayed. You, a distressed property is one that has payments not being made on a mortgage or association or homeowner dues, that sort of thing. Can you just ask them if they're up to date on that? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Are you paying your dues on time? And on a home, you'd say, is there an association here? Do you have dues from this association? How much are those dues? And you know, you're going to want to know. Um, delinquent assessments, uh, so that an assessment is an extra payment you have to make for paving the sidewalk or for God knows what. Um, it's another type of um, payment due. Insolvency, are they filing for bankruptcy or any such thing, right? If they're in bankruptcy court, can you list this property? No, no you cannot because the bankruptcy court has taken over as the um, entity in charge of that property. Now, you can contact the representative and say, hey, I had it listed, and if you want me to continue to list it, you know, for the court, I'm happy to do that. Let me know, I'm very familiar with the property, and you'll probably get the listing. So, that's possible. Uh, litigation, is there any arbitration, administrative action, governmental investigation, blah, blah, blah. Are you being sued for anything, right? Are there any special assessments that are pending or proposed? Um, is there anything that's coming down the pipe that you know of that would, um, that, and again, that you're not in agreement with or that there's some dispute over? Regulatory violations, association violations, financial obligations, liens and judgments. Now, I don't have a problem with liens and judgments, but I need to know about them. Oh, you owe your brother-in-law $150,000? Okay, and he recorded this lien against the property. This is against the property, not just you personally? That's correct. Okay, so you literally collateralized the house again, right? Now you gotta calculate and say, well, your mortgage is this much, and the 150,000 is this much, and the commission is this much, and closing costs is this much, and we can only get this much for the house. Now what have you got? Short sale. A potential short sale, and they're not going. And and if it goes to a potential short sale, my answer is you need to go see an attorney. I cannot advise you as to whether it is best for you to do a short sale at this time or not. You need to speak to an attorney. And the 
reason it is because sometimes people are better off working with an attorney to figure out how to deal with that. It's more than I take on. I do, I, I'll be happy to take on a short sale, but only after you've talked to an attorney. So how is it determined if it, it would be a short sale problem? Well, you do the math. The it mortgage is, if the amount of money you can get for this property is here and the money owed on it is up here, it's upside down, that's called upside down. Now that is a potential short sale. So. Um, and now the seller's um, obligation is under Section D. They agree to cooperate and will prepare the property for showings and open houses. Look at all this. Seller shall provide all pertinent information, documents, and keys, and permit act permit access to the property for home and other inspections, including termite, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? This is helpful to talk about in a listing presentation. Access. Seller shall allow access as needed during the reasonable hours for showings. Lockbox. Seller agrees to permit and will obtain written permission from any tenant to install a lockbox or electronic key device on the property. Now, this is an example where your client might say, no, I don't want a lockbox, and you say, okay, I agree, we don't want and won't have a lockbox. So here's what you can do. You go here, and we're going to hit the strikeout icon up here. See this? Strikeout. You hit that, and you highlight lockbox, and you hit strikeout again, and you've now crossed it out. To be clear, you can do that on any contract anywhere. It's all negotiable. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, except for seller's disclosure. Okay. Um, the sellers are obligated to provide a seller's disclosure in the state of Hawaii if they know anything about the property. If they don't know anything about the property, they can say, I don't know anything, no seller's disclosure. And you as a listing agent would have to let that be known up front. Right? Just let it be known right away. There will be no seller's disclosure. The seller hasn't been here. So for instance, this condo I just sold, she hadn't been to that condo in 10 years. No, please. She knew nothing about it. I had the seller who died fill out a seller's disclosure. So I submitted that and gave two repairs that have been done since then and said, this is for your information only. There will be no updated seller's disclosure. So I provided it because I had it, but it was five years old. So, <laughs> so lockbox, securing valuables. This is a really important item to discuss. Seller agrees to secure all valuables and will instruct any occupancy to secure their valuables. Um, professional advice, uh, yeah, like in the short sale, I'm gonna tell you to go see an attorney or anything else that you might need. Offer, seller agrees to consider all offers presented by the brokerage firm and to act in good faith to sell the property. Seller shall also agree to respond in writing to any offers presented. So even if you got a low ball offer and you be like, I'm not, I'm not even answering that, you need to reject it. We need to do this in writing at this point. There's a room for you to reject the offer and sign and um, your, the, my broker will sign and will send it back. The only thing I'm going to tell you is when I have a listing and the seller wants to reject an offer, I don't make them sign 14 pages. I just make them sign the last page. And then all I send is the last page. It's just, here it is, we're rejecting this. Do I do that, just the last page? No, it's got to be the whole document. I have to send the whole document, but I'm only going to make them sign on page 14. I'm not going to make them initial every... Can an agent come back to you and say, your seller should make should sign all 14 pages? Yes, they could. <coughs> and if they're that fussy, <coughs> you ask your seller, would you mind signing off? And just clicking on 14 pages, they want to all sign. But I tend not to. The reason is because we used to just be able to send an email and say, seller will not be responding seller rejects the offer, right? It used to be simpler, and then this last go around, they made it a little more complicated. So um, a seller doesn't want to answer this offer. They're not interested in signing 14 pages. <laughs> That's the place. The message. Yeah, of yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, so where would they sign? Because they've already signed for the 
the initial. Where no. would they sign if they a, a purchase on the contract? Yeah, that's got it. All right. The next Sorry, section is about you. the seller's disclosure. The seller's disclosure of material facts. I'm not going to review all of this with you, but here's what I say to people. The seller's disclosure is the most important document that you're going to be asked to fill out. It asks that you notify any prospective buyer of everything you know about this property. Everything you know about this property. So, if we were to go in here right now, and I do do this, I bring it right with me. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to add the seller's real property disclosure to my file. Seller's real property disclosure statement right here. And I'm going to click on that. And it's going to open it up. And if I had an address and everything, it would fill it all in, right? It would just carry forward. So um, be aware that on the seller's disclosure, there are four columns, a yes, a no, a not to my knowledge, and a not applicable. The majority of the answers should be what? Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. So when asked, is the property subject to covenants, conditions, and restrictions? You should know that. That should be a yes or a no. That should be pretty clear. Is there any <coughs> damage caused by tree roots? Like if the pipes busted or something? Not to my knowledge. I don't know what's going on everywhere. I, not to my knowledge. Is the property located in a special management area, SMA? You should be able to answer that. No, right? Does everybody know where the SMA area is? Does everybody know what the SMA area is? The SMA area is an area that requires two uh, permit approvals in order to have anything done, and it's quite restrictive, and it is around the perimeter of our island. So it would be um, between the Pi'ilani Highway and the ocean. Everything, literally, everything in Kihei, except my meadows and, you know, the golf course or whatever, is SMA. And you need to go through an SMA permit application as well as a regular permit application. And they're quite restrictive. Um, the, on the west side, it's the Hono Api'ilani Highway. That is the designated, right, everything. Um, to the ocean. I don't think Haiku has an SMA. Paia, clearly Hana Highway. Um, although it should be more, but it's just Hana Highway. So just be aware, that's what SMA is. Um, is the property located in a geothermal zone or near a geothermal facility? Not to my knowledge. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, right? Is the property located in a tsunami, tsunami evacuation zone? Well, if there were a tsunami warning, would you, if you were living in this house, get out of there? And if your answer is yes, then the answer is yes, right? Do they have, don't they have those maps? Don't they have Tsunami them? evacuation zones? Yeah, they do. Somewhere. I don't know where they are. They used to be in Yeah, they used to be in Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, it, I think if you go to the flood information. No, that's right? flood zones. Oh, okay. That's not tsunami evacuation zones, right? So, um, like, like I mean, when the when the tsunami sirens went off, all of Kihei evacuated, for God's <laughs> sakes, right? But it's like, get out of there. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. So I don't exactly know. So I would probably say I did not. To, I don't know. Is, is there a place that you can go to to get it? Google. What? Google. Oh, I, mean, Google. Yeah, I, I mean, like the SMA. Yeah. Google. Google. Okay. Google knows all. <laughs> Even stuff about a local county stuff. I just got a question this morning from a, another broker asking me about advertising laws, and I just go in and I go, uh, right. Title 19, chapter, you know, to, to, whatever it is, and it comes right up. I just go to Google anymore because going into the real estate commission site and finding the right documents. Mm -hmm. and, much too complicated. Google knows it all. You want to know 1031 exchange rules? Go 1031 exchange in Google. All sorts of wonderful articles come out. It really is. You want to know heart to firm the laws? Google. Yeah, it really is um, very helpful. Okay, so that's the seller's disclosure. What I want to just finish here with is on page four of the seller's disclosure is this little area of. Um, Defects, repairs, or replacements. In other words, has anything ever had a defect 
been repaired or replaced. And when you see these blank, you know something's wrong. Because unless the unit is brand new or, you know, just a year old, chances are somebody's had some repairs somewhere. And our job is to familiarize the buyer with the repair history of this house. So I encourage you to ask your sellers to please provide information. Have you ever replaced any of the plumbing or any of the toilets or anything on a sink? Or have you had electrical work done? Or have you had any kind of a leak that needed repair? Anything at all, you're obligated to disclose that. And if, again, people, like, people resist it and you say, let me ask you this. If you were thinking of buying a home, this is going to be your house and you're paying $600,000 for it. Would you want to know what was repaired last year or the year before? Yeah, I guess I would. I get it. That script helps me in more situations when I ask the party to put themselves into the other party's shoes. Right? It's so helpful. So just think of that. When you're trying to convince somebody of something, just make them be that person. <laughs> it, it helps. Okay, um, so that's really what our seller's disclosure portion is about on our listing contract. It's very important. It's the place where we get into most trouble, right? When, when, when a seller doesn't disclose something and a buyer finds it out later, guess who they blame? Agents. They blame agents. So watch it. Um, the end here on page, what am I on? Page four is about leasehold disclosure. If it's a leasehold property, clearly you need to disclose that. Fair housing laws, we've talked about that. Sex offender items, don't be asking. Uh, next thing you know is this person's a sex offender. Don't go there. She says, I have no obligations in terms of sex offender. Just letting you know that if a buyer were to ask me, I'd tell them to go to the internet. I, we, we don't deal with it. <coughs> don't go there. Prospects from prior listings, here we go. So now you're asking, do you have any prospects from a prior listing? Uh, mediation and arbitration if any dispute or claim in law or um, equity arises out of this contract and if the parties can't resolve then seller agrees to attempt in good faith to settle <coughs> such a dispute through non-binding mediation that's all we're saying here there's no obligation here we are just in good faith you are willing to attempt to resolve it Escrow, what is escrow? A bonded company shall be employed to help in the conveyance of the property. But escrow is an impartial third party that helps us hold the money and make sure everybody agrees. Costs, um, here you can go over some um, additional costs that they're going to have as they're closing. Seller's authorizations. Um, miscellaneous terms, foreign investment, be sure to mention here, if, if, if you're living in California, you're going to have to pay what? HARPTA. How much is HARPTA? Seven. 7.25, I believe. So if you say seven and a half, it's okay. What is that? Is that a tax? Is that a tax? Why real property tax? No. It is a withholding. The state is going to withhold that money and then you're going to fill out a tax return and you're going to say, I paid more for this property than I'm getting for it and you will get your, it's, it's, it's based on profit, right? They're just withholding money that in case you owe the state money in your tax returns that there's money already in the coffers. It's a withholding. It is not a tax. Okay, same thing with FERCTA. That 10% or 15% is a withholding. So they can get it back then? Yes, as soon as they file tax returns. And in the state, they can file tax returns in the next quarter. For the federal, they need to wait a while. They can also fill out forms to be exempt from HARPTA. Um, the state will consider your documentation in advance and say okay you don't need to withhold anything you, you're not going to make any money we can see that so and escrow will help you do all of this or will help your client do all of this um, okay and then at the back um, your client signs on the last page 
of the form and your broker must initial every page, sign on the back page, and then on the back page is a final little seller's initial right here that a lot of people forget and notice it isn't yellowed. So you have to bring something there and it says that the seller has received a copy of this. Now you can tell your seller to go ahead and sign that because the moment, if they're doing it electronically, the moment they sign, they're going to get a copy. Right? It's going to be emailed to them instantaneously through zip forms when they sign through zip forms or DocuSign. They're going to get a copy of what they signed. Is everybody aware of that? Right? So if you've got signers that you send things to through zip forms or DocuSign, the person who signed is going to get a copy of what they signed nice thing to know. So when you're uh, doing this, for, first you, your broker's going to go over the listing, right? No, you're going to do it first. Oh. Yeah, you're, if you have questions for your broker, that's fine, but this isn't as complicated as a purchase okay. agreement, so we don't require you to come to us first. So you sit with them and do it on the computer? Mm, or you do it in advance, leave some blanks, fill in by handwriting, initial and anything scan. you put in by handwriting, like the Purchase price, maybe, you know, everything else is probably okay. Okay. When we strike out via the strikeout form, do they have to initial that no. portion there? No. Need. Okay. Only handwritten. Understood. Yeah, there's a paragraph in here that says, how that all oh, works. Yeah. <laughs> and do you, the um, seller's agent, have to sign anywhere on this? It's just the broker and the seller that sign? That's correct. Seller's agent does not sign. Seller's agent signs the dual agency consent addendum, right? The listing agent signs the dual agency consent addendum, but not the listing agreement. Okay, so that takes us to who would like to do some homework? What you got? All right, we got Larry Lister. <laughs> we got Larry Lister. Anybody else? Anybody else want to do a little homework? You do one? Okay. Couldn't hurt, right? Couldn't hurt. That's Larry Lister. That's Larry Lister. You can do Larry Lister again. Larry Lister, it's a Cam Sands building 10 on the second floor. It's a two bedroom, two bath unit. The kitchen was remodeled in 2005. Floors were tiled and bath cabinets were replaced in 2005 also. It's a vacation rental with a good record. All furnishings are included. The furniture was brand new just in just three and a half years ago. And if you did this already, what you will see is the prices have changed. And it's a great exercise to go, oh my God, look at what the prices have done. Right? <laughs> yeah. and, or just when you think, I, I only did this four months ago, there can't be a change. I have now used this for about two years. The prices have gone up there, I would say $200,000. Okay. Vacation rentals are just gold, right? In the last couple of years. Shocking. Yeah. Tough place to stuff your money, that's why. Well, here's what's interesting. Keep in mind, you yeah. got into real estate not to sell real estate. You are in real estate to buy real estate. Mm -hmm. And when you get that, you'll get it when you start seeing the market like this and you start understanding the market. And when you feel really confident about what you know about the market and you've squirreled a little money away, you're going to say, oh my God, it's time to buy. I can do this. That's how people get there, right? They just get so familiar with the market that they recognize the time is now. And then there's also, over years, you'll have people who come and visit you and they'll have wanted to buy, and you save that file folder. You save that. And then they come back three years later and they go, oh, should we, should we buy? And you look at it again, it's $100,000 more. And you save that. And then they come back 10 years later and they go, what's it worth now? And I have one like that, a folder. It's, it was Kapalua Golf Villas. And they started out at $480,000. They're now a million. And oh my God, did they wish they had bought. So the answer to that is, when people say that, oh, I guess I should have been here last year, is that you're going to come back next year and say that to me. 
that's the truth. That's your sense of urgency clothes, right? That's the sense of urgency clothes. Well, that's the sense of don't think that just because the prices went up now, they're not going to continue going. You're going to come back next year and say you wish you would have bought. Just say. All right, your um, form A, right? Attachment A. You need to fill out every element of this, right? As part of your homework. Get used to it. Get used to writing a. Um, uh, you want one? Yes, please. Get, get used to it. It's part of your packet. It's part of the packet when you opened your, your transaction and you pulled the template. It's form A, it's the data input form. So every Every element has to be filled out, and uh, write me a nice uh, realtor remarks. You're going to have to get used to it. And if you don't know what to write, go read some. And you will see there are some agents that are really good at it, and some agents that are really bad. You don't need to tell me, this is my two bedroom, one bath at um, Kama Ollie Sands. I just didn't know got that far from So say something, and adjectives are important. The words that you use will form pictures in the reader's mind. So if it's bright and sunny, what do you picture? Dark and gloomy? No. <laughs> so use those words. Don't be afraid to say surrounded by trees. Um, rushing wind can be heard. Like I've got a friend staying with me. She can't get over how beautiful the wind sounds at my house. Mm -hmm. I forget. I totally forget, right? So what is it you notice about the property and be able to describe that. Learn to write something nice that embellishes and, and helps you sell that property. Rooster crows. Rooster crows. No need for a life no <laughs> <need for life. laughs> Wildlife abounds. That's how you glamorize that. Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Free range chickens. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. So on Friday, we're going to do a CMA. And that's Right? At 10 o'clock, and we'll go over your homework. And John, if you would hit the stop button on that. Oh, Oops. no, never mind. She's oh. got you. <laughs>